Okay, so you just clicked on a video titled the top 21 best boobs in one piece I feel kind of obligated to present some knockers to you right out of the gate So you don't click off, you know after you see the pasty white kid You're like, oh, I came here for boobs and now I got to see this. Hey, look, I'm sorry Okay, I would have liked to show just a slideshow like here's number 21 2019 just progressively But my ego is way too big for that. I need to be on camera to present these to you. I'm sorry so Thanks to almost 15,000 people that voted for this. I want you to imagine Sanji right now in your mind, ladies and gentlemen. He's crying. Just a single tear falling down his face. <sighs> He's proud of you all. We were so close. We had 14,937 votes, almost to 15K. But hey, I'm not complaining. Uh, this was a huge turnout, so thanks to everybody that voted. I had around 107 female characters on that poll. Um, you know, and the reason I'm doing the 21, the top 21 and not the top 20, the reason it's such a weird number is because there was someone that was, uh, at number 20 for a long time in the poll, like up until two days before it ended, she was like number 20 and I was really excited to talk about her. Um, and then uh, like the last two days she got bumped down to number 21 and I thought, you know what? Bullshit. I wanted to talk about this character so bad. I'm still going to talk about her. So that's why it's the top 21. Also, just to keep in mind, I put a link to an Excel spreadsheet in the link below so you can check out the top 50. Uh, I didn't include the rankings of every single person, which rank they all came in, because it usually was, like, catered to the top, and then once you got to the very bottom, it was like some of them got no votes whatsoever, some of them only got, like, one or two. Um, and not all, like, 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 some of them were just, like, insignificant, like, background characters. I didn't think they were gonna get a lot of votes, but there were some characters, like, like, Miss Valentine got only, like, four votes, and I'm like, what the fuck is wrong with Miss Valentine? I mean, I know she wasn't that relevant, you know, it, she hasn't been relevant in years, really, ever since, like, Little Garden, but she was, she was cute. I, I, I whatever. Okay, anyway. All right, so here we go. Top 21 best boobs in One Piece as voted by you, the viewers. Number 21 with 122 votes, Domino. All right, now, might think, Domino, that's interesting. Why would you want to talk about her so much? So she was number 20 for like five or six days of the poll. Like the last day or two, she switched out for somebody else. But I wanted to talk about Domino because she's so interesting to me. I've always liked her design, you know, the hair and the glasses. You don't really see her eyes and everything. Um, but I also felt kind of bad for her because if you really look at the Impel Down arc where she's introduced, she doesn't really do anything. She doesn't fight against Luffy or any of the, uh, the escaped convicts. She doesn't even fight against any of like the fodder uh, prisoners you know we see her holding like a whip or something maybe it's a crop or something but we don't really know how proficient she is at fighting she's honestly treated more as like a secretary throughout the arc which doesn't even make any sense because she is like the vice head jailer she was the assistant to Shiryu before he was imprisoned and now currently after the time skip she is the new head jailer of Impel Down so this is what she looked like before the time skip this is what she looks like after the time skip like all right she she's gotten a little bit more you know of a, of a thing going on here but maybe you can't really notice too well because this is in black and white so let me show you the color and then you might see what's up here yeah so this is from the digitally colored comic. It seems that Domino at some point in the two year time skip just decided to stop wearing a shirt. Um, which I'm fine with that, but it's just it's just weird because she was all like so like professional and prim and proper before the time skip like Warden Magellan There's a breakout. You need to do something sir And then after the time skip she's like, you know what this shirt is just I'm just gonna stop wearing this I'm just gonna wear my jacket and then my tie right in between my cleavage and that'll be good enough uh, She seems to have cut her hair a little bit and then I realized the reason why I was like a little bit drawn to her the thing about her that makes her a little bit interesting, you know her name, Domino. I always thought it was because of the game, Dominoes. You know, little things with the numbers on them. No, her name is Domino as in Dominus, as in controlling others, as in Dominatrix. And then this whole thing with the outfit and the whip and the crop and that whole thing and the kind of like Nazi persona thing she's got going on, that, that makes way too much sense now. So... Way to go, Domino. You were at number 20 for so long, but you just got bumped down to number 21. But I'm glad that you still ranked fairly high. So, way to go. Okay, so number 20 with 127 votes, the person that beat out Domino at the last minute was Boa Sanderzonia. Now, 
All three of the Boa siblings are not on this list. Actually, surprisingly, Boa Hancock didn't make the cut. I know, I'm surprised just as much as you are, really. Um, okay, no one's gonna fucking believe that. Alright, alright, alright. Yeah, but Boa Sanderzonia, I don't know. I feel like she's always had a lot of a, a strong fan following. You know, her body, you know, the, the thing about the Boa sisters is that Boa Hancock's the one that proportionally looks the most similar to other, you know, humans in the One Piece world. You know, like, she has really big boobs and really long legs and everything, but compared to her sisters, you have Boa Marigold, who is, like, practicing sumo fighting, so she gets really big, and then you have Boa Sanderzonia, who has, like, she's really tall, she has, like, a normal body, but in proportion, her head is huge, which I would say is weird until Ivankov became a thing, which, by the way, is Ivankov on the list? Ivankov did not make the top 21, damn it. But yeah, I don't know what the draw is with Boa Sanderzonia. Is it the green hair? Is it the snake tongue? Because you could do some fun stuff with that. Is it the fact that she straight up went topless during the Amazon Lily arc? Okay, that might have something to do with it. But uh, congratulations, Sanderzonia. You were the only other sibling aside from Hancock to make it on the list. Sadly, Boa Marigold did not make it. She actually ranked really low. She was like right up there with Miss Valentine. She only got like six or seven votes. It was actually really depressing. But, you know, I'm sorry. That's just how the cookie crumbles. Okay, so at number 19, we have ourselves a mermaid. Now, I knew that Kami and Shirahoshi were probably going to top the charts in terms of the mermaids, uh, but I wanted to include every named mermaid that was introduced during Fishman Island to kind of just see which one was the fan favorite out of those mermaids that we didn't get to see that much of, really. And at number 19, with 132 votes, we have Ishili. Alright, so I don't think I really need to explain why she literally knocked uh, Sanji into a horny coma. Her boobs almost caused the death of Sanji if they didn't get that blood transfusion in time, okay? So those are some, st some damn impressive knockers, I gotta tell you. Um, personally, my favorite mermaid out of that whole little group that was introduced was Mero, I the blue-haired one. I don't know what it was, just the thing with the eyes, the expression, the, the hair, I don't know what it was, but uh, and also uh, the boobs, of course, I would assume the boobs. Uh, but but in terms of just magnificent breasts, Ishili comes out on top of the other Mermaid Cafe girls, uh, with the exception of Kami. Uh, oh wait, no, there's another one that's higher up on the list too, I forgot about her. We'll, we'll get to her in a second. Actually, we'll get to her right now. Number 18 with 189 votes, Madame Charlie. Okay, so she's kind of part of the Mermaid Cafe, but she's not, like, actually the one that, like, services customers. She's just kind of the head of it. Also, I, I'm kind of afraid to talk about her rack too much because she's the kind of character in One Piece. One of the very few characters in One Piece, aside from, like, Nami, that don't take that shit lightly. Like, remember when Luffy asked Brooke if he poops and Brooke just casually answers, yes, I do? Yeah, Charlie's not having any of that shit. She just ready to bite fucking uh, Luffy's head right off. Uh, she's a shark mermaid, and she is Arlong's sister although we don't really get to see them interact all that much. Um, somebody commented on the video that I posted of this, like her uh, boobs are giant pale mountains of deliciousness or something, so yeah, I think that I think that uh, makes it go really well too. She has the very revealing V-neck there throughout the arc. Uh, in the later stages, she gets injured and they have to be bandaged up, unfortunately. Uh, but yeah, number 18 goes to Madame Charlie. So moving on to number 17 with 203 votes... Okay, we all knew this was going to happen. I, kn I knew this was going to happen the second I started this poll. You want to guess? It's Big Mom. It's Charlotte Linlin, number 17. Now look, I knew this was going to happen because I knew there was going to be a shit ton of trolls that were just going to be like, I'm going to vote for Big Mom just to fuck with him. But I had faith that I was going to get enough votes in this contest so it wouldn't tip it so much. Because you can only get one vote per person. So I was like, there was going to be some people that were going to throw away their vote for a tr for, for, for a Big Mom. Uh, but I knew there was going to be enough people that were going to balance that out so it wouldn't matter. But it still made her get into the top 20. So, um... Just to make you guys feel a little bit of sense of perspective here on this whole situation, um... On top of, of course, coming out of head of Charlie and Ishili and Domino and Boa Sanderzonia, uh, Charlotte Linlin also ranked higher than Margaret, Karina from Film Gold, Sadie from Impel Down, uh, Pudding, Baby Five, uh, Hina, and probably most surprisingly, Khalifa. You have Big Mom coming out ahead of Khalifa. Well, you know what? I can't disagree, ladies and gents. I can't disagree. With that being said, moving on.
Moving on to number 16 with 219 votes, we got some film gold love with Baccarat. Oh my god, I am so happy she made it on this list. Um, I made sure to include most of the females that were introduced in film gold. I didn't go back through every single One Piece movie and included like every female, female character that appeared in every movie. Um, I made sure to include film gold though because that was the most uh, recent one and I feel like a lot of those characters are fresh in our minds. So I'm glad Baccarat made it in the top 20. Uh, I mean... She's got it going on. She's got it going on even just in her typical, like, tank top with the sunglasses right there in between her boobs. But then you get her to her, her battle outfit, her, you know, her lucky golden outfit. And, and, uh, there's a lot of close-up shots with that. Yeah, so, uh, I'm good. I'm good. Luck? Luck is on your side. Number 15 with 243 votes. We have another mermaid that I knew was going to rank fairly high. We have Kami. And you know what's interesting about Kami? You know how the animators in One Piece will usually take a female character and then just give her way more fan service that was ever introduced in the manga? Like Viola or Rebecca in Dressrosa. They really go an extra mile to show some, like, beyond fan service with those characters in Dressrosa. Kami, I felt like they were gonna do that, and they just really didn't all that much. You know, Kami introduced pre-time skip, you know, she has a nice little cutesy appearance. After the time skip, Oda does do the same thing he does with most females female characters, you know, gives them a little bit more of a revealing outfit, makes her boobs bigger, but outside of, like, one or two shots, they don't really go out of their way to really overly sexualize Kami, um, so I'm glad she made it on this list. I don't know if that's a good way. Am I supporting over-sexualization of female characters, or am I, am I applauding that there isn't? I, she's got green hair and a nice rack. There we go. Moving on. Number 14 with 335 votes is Vivi Nefertari. Okay, so Vivi... Oh, shit. I forgot to put her mom on this list. I forgot to put Vivi's mom on this list. And the reason why I'm mad about that is because her mother is literally named Titi. You see what... Okay, whatever. It doesn't matter. She was just kind of a minor character anyway. She's dead, so whatever. Well, there's other dead characters on this list, but okay. Anyway, Vivi. Uh, I think this is really cool. We haven't seen Vivi in forever. Once again, after time skip, Oda, you know, like, slimmed her up and, you know, busted her out a little bit. She's gonna be... Uh, well, she already has made an appearance post-time skip. She's heading to Reverie. Uh, so uh, keep an eye out for Vivi, because we'll be seeing her very soon uh, during uh, the Reverie little mini-arc. Uh, her talking to all the other, you know, probably the princes and princes of the world. Maybe she'll have a moment at the summit where she'll stand up for the Straw Hat crew or whatever. Uh, she's always been one of those characters that is dressed rather conservatively outside of whenever she was Mrs. Wednesday, remember, with the weird... I remember that. They actually had to censor that in the anime. In the manga, she was wearing, like, that circular outfit and they had to censor it in the anime to, like, a striped one because those circles, they look too much like, um... Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you had to make sure with that. But, uh, yeah, number 14 goes to Vivi. I think a fair, fair spot for her. Number 13, with 367 votes, Koala. Okay, I voted for Koala. That was, many people asked, okay, Teching, who did your vote go for? And many people just threw out there, oh, it has to be, it's got to be Robin, right? You had to vote for Robin, right? No, no, I felt like Robin was going to do fairly good on her own, which, by the way, Robin was the front runner of this whole contest for about four days. She was the front runner. It seemed like she was going to win, no problem, but... You know, we have someone else come out behind her and just, you know, shoved her out of the way. Um, but yeah, Robin was doing fairly good on her own. I didn't need to worry about her all too much. So I wanted to vote for somebody else, and I cast my vote for Koala. Yeah, I don't know what it is. It's just she has a very cutesy appearance. I know other people that have commented about that. Many people, a big criticism of this contest, um was that many women in One Piece are all drawn, like, identically, so it's like, who has the best boobs? Pretty much all of them. You know, that's the only right answer, right, Tekking? Uh, so somebody was like, well, I'm gonna go default to who I find is the cutest character. I went with Koala. And I could certainly agree with that, too. Uh, she's another example, like, when you see her in the manga at first, you know, when she gets reintroduced into the series, she's 22 years old, and I'm like, oh, okay, she's got, wow, yeah, she, she, she developed. She certainly developed. Then, of course, I, I guess with the animators with Dressrosa, they just wanted to go crazy with the female cast in Dressrosa. I don't know who the hell animated it. But we had Viola and Rebecca. And then we have Koala in those scenes where she's invading the port and she's doing the new Fishman Karate thing. It's very, very prominent that she has um, particularly large jubbly jubblies. So, uh, yeah. 
Koala. Uh, cool. Also liked her in the episode of Sabo special. That was neat. Hope to see her again later on uh, in whenever the Revolutionary Army, I guess, when the when the uh, commanders of the army are meeting, she'll probably, you know, play a central role there or something like that. Um, pretty cool. And also, can we just admit that her and, and Sabo, that's they're a couple, that's a thing. Because just the way they play off each other, it's it's just legit adorbs, guys. Come on, let this be a thing. Okay, number 12 with 370 votes. The furries will enjoy this one. We get Carrot. All right, so Carrot, cool. Fairly new character introduced to the series, so it's pretty cool to see her rank too high. Although I would say there's a little bit of bias because the characters that are introduced more that are currently prevalent in the story that are currently in the main series of, of events, um, they were probably going to rank more because they are more fresh in the user's mind. But whatever, I don't care. I'm not. I'm not complaining. Um, you know what I just got while I was uh, getting images for Carrot for this video? What I really just understood. Do you guys remember the movie Space Jam starring Michael Jordan? It was released in the 90s, and it had uh, Bugs Bunny and everybody in it, and it was also very notable for the introduction of Lola Bunny, who um, I think gave a lot of kids weird feelings growing up, me included. Like, I'm not into furries or anything, but the nostalgia critics said it best. They gave her bunny boobies. So, how is a fucking seven-year-old teching supposed to take that, is basically what I'm saying. I, weird childhood development years growing up. But, yeah, that reminded me a lot of Carrot, you know, going into her character and everything. Sexy bunny with, uh, bunny boobies. Yeah. And closing out our secondary top ten, we have, with 491 votes... Monet, our resident harpy girl. So, yeah, it's uh, actually nice. So, Carrot was number 12. She had the whole furry aesthetic. And then we have number 11, who's Monet. Also has a little bit of that aesthetic because she's a harpy and she's got the bird wings and everything like that. Well, even before she got the bird wings, she was uh, still, she got it going on. Um, she has, like, an interesting personality because she's very bashful or shy whenever someone compliments her appearance, you know. Uh, like, whenever someone compliments Nami, she just soaks that shit up like a magnet, like, Oh my god, you're so hot. It was like, well, yeah, I know it. But then you get to uh, Monet. I will never do that again. I'm sorry. Um, but then you get to Monet, and someone compliments Monet. Like, oh my god, she's so cute. She's so hot. And you have this, like, cutesy moment where she puts her wings in front of her mouth, and she, like, blushes. And she's like, mm, thank you so much. Um, but yeah, so uh, she's uh, actually the sister of uh, Sugar. And Sugar was not on this list, because even though she is technically 22, she has the body of a child. So we're not even going there. But maybe, I feel like a lot of people that would have voted for Sugar, Sugar, maybe the lollycons out there or whatever, maybe they would have drawn their vote to Monet just because she's a blood relation. I don't know how that went down, but, um, yeah, Monet, number 11. T sucks she's dead now. One of the very few people on this list that is actually confirmed to be dead, but, uh... Stab through the heart, and you're to blame, Caesar. I don't know if I'm quoting this song the right way. You didn't come here for cringe. You came here for tits. I know, I know. Just top 10! All right, are you guys ready for the top 10? I, okay, I just realized that asking if somebody is ready for the top 10 in a best boobs poll, that might imply that several of my fans are now in the process of taking down their underwear and grabbing the fucking lotion, so not that, not that kind of ready, but are you ready to have the top 10 revealed to you? And that still didn't sound good. All right, anyway, number 10 with 604 votes, ladies and gentlemen, goes to... Reju Vinsmoke, Rule 63 Sanji also. Um, yeah, that's what I'm sitting there. I'm sitting there like, oh yeah, Reju's gonna rank really high in this because once again, she's very prevalent in the story. But I'm also thinking maybe part of the reason is, you know, are people into the gender-bent Sanji thing? You know, that's, that's the reason I feel like Reju is not going to join the Straw Hats is because it would be kind of weird to have two characters that look very visually similar on the same crew, you know. I, I, I don't know, maybe you would be for that. I, I just think that would be a little weird. Um, but yeah, plunging V-neck, that's always a plus, as well as the fact that she, uh, you know, had her sexually implicit introduction with Luffy, sucking out the poison. Oh, oh god, that's hot. Alright, um, yeah, but, uh, anyway... Yeah, so thanks to Reiju for showing up in number 604, uh, representing the Germa Double Six, uh, the hottest part of the Germa Double Six, really. Uh, if she doesn't join the Straw Hats, I at least hope she's still relevant in the story in some way. Maybe an ally to the Straw Hats that she might show up again. Uh, certainly the kindest out of all of the siblings, you know, of course, uh, except for Sanji. So, uh, yeah, I'm really interested in seeing her and maybe what she can do in the future.
Moving on to number 9 with 638 votes, we have our resident ghost girl, Perona. I feel like... I feel like the only reason Perona ranks so high, I feel like I had a little bit of responsibility for this because the image I used for Perona on the poll, it wasn't an image taken from the anime as what I did with most characters. It was a uh, special artwork drawn for One Piece Burning Blood and it was her in a bikini. Um, but I wanted to show that one because I feel like Perona's boobs weren't really shown that much in the story, the way she normally dresses, you know. But um, hey, these were drawn by Oda himself. So, uh, I think that's Oda claiming that, yeah, Perona, she's got quite the rack, so there you go. Um, the sad thing is they're ghost boobs, you know, so it's like you could try to touch them when you're having sex or whatever, but they could just go right through you. Oh, speaking of Perona having sex, Mihawk, Perona, they're on that island all by themselves, guys. What the fuck do you do? All I'm saying is they're, uh, they're getting it on, longsword style, mm-hmm. But yeah, I can see why you'd go for Perona. She's got the whole goth thing going on. She's got, um, she's got pink hair. That's something. Actually, I just realized a lot of characters that have pink hair made it on this list. Actually, one, two, three, five characters made it in the top ten that have pink hair. Half of top ten is comprised of pink-haired ladies. Crazy. Huh. Weird. Moving on to number eight with 700 votes, we have... Tashigi. So we got a little bit of marine love in this, which is good because Hina ranked really low on this, who also has pink hair. I thought Hina was going to rank fairly high. Uh, she was actually ranked, uh, she was in the 20s somewhere. Just let me check really quick. Hina ranked uh, with 62 votes. She was number 30, uh, right between Kokoro and Ivankov. So uh, yeah, Hina didn't do as well as I thought she would. But uh, yeah, we have Tashigi. Now, um, Tashigi seems, it, there seems to be a stipulation in the Marines that whenever you gain a rank in the Marines, I guess you get a coupon for free breast implants because this was Tashigi when she was uh, a uh, Master Chief Petty Officer at the beginning of the story in Logtown, okay? So fairly, you know, drawn normal here. And then you get when she's uh, after the end of the Alabasta, not the end of the Alabasta, when at the end of like Eni's lobby, uh, she's an ensign now. And her boobs are, okay, a little bit more prominent there. Then again, she is ruling a rather revealing, you know, tank top and everything. Uh, but then we get the time skip, and Oda just, once again, has to resort to the old tuck and boom, um, as we have her being introduced with very large boobs. But, if that wasn't good enough for you, we also had the whole uh, body swapping moment where Smoker gets put in Tashigi's body and vice versa. And essentially, the first thing that Smoker does after being put in Tashigi's body is realizing that the bra is sort of encumbering, just rips that fucking thing off and just leaves it open. So I feel like there should be a rather uh, prominent sexual harassment lawsuit there in the works, but uh, that doesn't go that way. Although the moment when Law swaps their bodies back and Tashigi finds out that her she's exposed, um, she tucks up and the expression she gives Smoker, I found that fucking adorable. Um, but yeah, way to go Tashigi. Number eight spot, top 10, I think you deserve it. Number seven is an interesting one because it's also the title of the Queen of the Mermaids, boobs. Yeah, with 813 votes, it's Shira Hoshi. Now, look. I stated in the original video that I'm not going to include children on the list because that would be fucking creepy. I had a little bit of a problem though because you have characters like Shirahoshi and Rebecca who are also very prominent in the story that you knew were going to get votes. Like, if I didn't include Rebecca and Shirahoshi in the list, people would have rioted. I needed to include them, but they were both 16. So I had a little bit of a rule where I went with the way that they're designed. You know, aesthetically, there's really no difference between the way Rebecca is drawn and the way that Nami is drawn. Anyway, yeah, Shirahoshi, uh, described as, you know, rather cute but huge, uh, is the mermaid princess regarded as the most beautiful woman in all of the world of One Piece. Uh, I think it's fairly easy to see why. Um, you know, uh, the first time she was introduced, Luffy literally bounces on her boobs like a trampoline, so you know where Oda's perspective is there. You know, just remember, however perverted I may be in this video, in this contest, Oda... 100 times more perverted. In fact, I feel like Oda really wanted to do something like this. He wanted to do, like, a best boobs in Bleach pool, but, like, Shueisha just wouldn't let him do it. And, like, okay, we, we can't have you be doing that. That's a little bit going too far, you know. Uh, so if Oda, buddy, if you're watching this right now, I feel you. I felt your pain, and I took it upon myself 
as my cross to bear to answer this question. I know it was only with my audience. If you would have done this, you probably would have gotten much more. But um, I did the best I can, Oda Sensei. I did the best I could. And uh, I, think we, uh, I think we got something here really magical. So I'm thinking of you, man. I'm thinking of you. So yeah, Shirahoshi, 813 votes. Good on you, Mermaid Princess. Number six, with 958 votes, we have Jory Bonnie, the um, only female in the supernovas and the only supernova that made it on this list because she's the only female. I don't know, Rouge got some votes. And, you know, uh, surprisingly, Hawkins did way better than you'd think he would. But anyway, um, yeah, Jewelry Bonnie, uh, you know, and some people even came to me with Bonnie and was like, hey, well, Bonnie, she can be really young too. I'm like, yeah, but her default form is in fact that of a, you know, fully developed woman. Uh, it's also interesting though, because we, it's true, we do not know Jewelry Bonnie's actual age. I'm going to assume that she's actually way older than she is, because she seems to exhibit things like grudges against people that seem to be lasting a really long time. Or I guess another way of looking at it is she's very childish. I don't really know, um, but I like to think that she's like older than she is, like maybe in her 50s or 60s, and she's just using the power of her devil fruit to maintain her, you know, in her prime, you know, her prime. Um, you know, I don't know why she ranked this high, aside from the, the, the pink hair. Uh, I mean, she's got a revealing tank top, but she's not nearly as well as the most revealing, you know, woman in One Piece. I don't know. Maybe it's she eats a lot. Maybe that's a thing. She can eat all the time, and it doesn't seem to change her figure at all. I don't know. That's a thing, maybe. Um, I like the little, you know, uh, tattoo shing she's got under her eye. That's cute, I guess. Um, but she hasn't really shown that much. Uh, she hasn't really shown that in the story all that much. So, um... I don't know, but, uh, yeah, Jewelry Bonnie ranked pretty damn high, and, uh, with these, tre maybe it's because of these, uh, these Treasure Cruise photos, that might have something more to do with it now that I actually think about it. Uh, man, I wish I was that hot dog. I mean, okay, okay, um, what was I talking about? Right, um, on uh, top five! Top five, bitches! Okay, so it's important to put this into context because I find this just hilarious on how well this worked out. Number five and number four switched places more times than any other character on this list. It was like every other day, it was neck and neck. It was five and four, five and four. The reason that that is relevant is because the characters that were number five and number four. I find that great. Number five, with 1,103 votes, goes to Viola. Uh, so, I, and I, I think this is mostly because in the anime, they really made her boobs bigger. Like, it was very apparent in the anime what they did. Because in the manga, her dress is very shown to clearly to, like, cover up her breasts. In the anime, she's got a lot of side boob action going on, so it's very apparent what they did there, you know? She's the dancer lady that seems to exude all of the passion and lust that Dressrosa brings. Um, so, yeah, Sanji becomes smitten with her, of course, but she turns into an ally later on in the story, um, you know, very helpful in taking out Doflamingo and his pirate crew, uh, and is now an ally of the, uh, the Straw Hat Pirates, as well as resuming her role as the, uh, the true princess of the, uh, of the, of the Dressrosa Kingdom. It's also important to mention, because you get confused a lot, Rebecca is not the princess of the Dressrosa Kingdom. You want to say she is, but she's actually the granddaughter of King Riku, so she was, uh, it's, it's, it's Viola before she is the, she is the, uh, the, the true princess, you know? Um, but yeah, Viola, pretty hot, pretty hot. Um, I wonder what she looks like naked. You know what? Maybe I'll ask Doflamingo because those two, they've, they've, they fucked. Yeah, that was, uh, you know, it's funny too, because Oda had to come out and say that they boned, but he had to do it in such a way that wouldn't get Shueisha pissed off. So in the actual context of the story, um, I think Viola addresses Doflamingo as Dofi or something, and then Doflamingo calls Viola Violet, as if they have, like, pet names for each other. And in an SBS, somebody brings up that weird thing that they said to each other, and Oda says that I can't come right out and say it because of they, the editors won't let me, but let's just say, ladies and gentlemen, that Dressrosa truly is a passionate country. They were a thing. They've they got it on. So now you can imagine Doflamingo and his muscular frame thrusting up against Viola. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, I don't know why I decided to give you that mental image, but you have it now. So take it whatever you will. All right. 
All right, so now moving on to number four, who, like I said, switched with the number five spot, switched with Viola quite a bit, and you'll find it kind of funny when I tell you who it is. With 1,119 votes, Rebecca. See, this is the reason I knew I had to include Rebecca on this list. If, if Rebecca was just some side character that nobody gave a shit about, I would be like, all right, all right, I won't include her. She's, you know, whatever. But, you know, I had to include her because I knew she, for a fact she was going to be in the top ten. Once again, pink hair. I don't know. Maybe there's a lot of people that have the pink hair fetish in my in my audience. I don't know. But here it is, Rebecca. And it, it's, of course, because of the way she's portrayed in the anime. It's, uh, yeah sexy badass gladiator girl who you know can fight pretty damn pretty damn solid you know uh and i uh she's gonna appear again in reverie so we're gonna see her and viola and vivi all present in the reverie meeting so that'll be neat maybe they'll have a conversation maybe they'll all get together and have some girl talk about the straw hats or whatever and talk about their adventures or something that would be cool see that um yeah I'm now picturing a Vivi Viola Rebecca fanfiction in my head. This is probably a thing that already exists. All right, so moving on to the top three, and we all know who's in the goddamn top three. We all know. If you're a fan of One Piece, you know which girls have not been mentioned up to this point, and you know which girls are going to get the top three easy. But the order may surprise you. Case in point, number three. With 1,532 votes, Nami. Nami, with the bronze trophy. Nami, coming in third place. That might piss a lot of you people off. And you know what? It surprised even me. You know? I mean, maybe it's because the way that Oda draws Nami, we get to see her assets pretty much all the time. It's nothing new, you know? Uh, I, I don't know, but, uh, maybe, maybe people are getting a little bit too desensitized to her tits. That might be an option too. I just don't know. But, uh, she came in number three. Also, I really had to struggle with not making her, uh, picture on the pole, the image when Sanji was inside of her body and just pushing up her breasts. I really wanted that to be her image, but I figured, ah, that's playing it a little bit too intense. And that's technically not really Nami, so... We'll just keep it with the way she normally dresses and acts, which is, you know, still, you know, less boob touching in that regard, but still, yeah. Um, let's just take a moment, ladies and gentlemen, to appreciate the development of Nami throughout the One Piece story, you know. This was Nami the way she was perceived at the beginning of the story. This is Nami in Alabasta. All right, we're getting a little bit more. Okay, this is Nami in Annie's Lobby. All right, now you're kind of pushing. This is Nami by the time that the time skips, Saba Ondi, and like, all right, well, whatever. She's wearing a shirt, so you can't really tell. And then after the time skip, I think this was Oda's moment where he's like, okay, I know what I must do. Ship, boom. Yep, there you go. And that starts the trend that will continue. Well, you're going to do the time skip. It's like, well, if I'm ever going to change around these characters' designs the way that I intend them to be, well, this is a better time as anything, so here we go. Um, yeah. If you want more information on Nami's breasts, check out this discussion video where I go in length on 12 minutes discussing them. Uh, and it actually does have a point. The point is basically that Nami loves money and that all of the different Nami merchandise that exists in the world, like Nami body pillows, Nami mouse pads, Nami figurines, all the things that people buy because they're in love with Nami, or rather Nami's form anyway, all the things that are being purchased in Nami's image are essentially making a fortune. So do you get it? Nami's literally creating her own fortune. I just find that ironic. Okay, well, moving on with number two. Now keep in mind, like I said, I, I think you guys can piece it together where we're going, because I already said that Nico Robin was the front runner of this contest up until a certain a certain other big busted contender showed up and knocked her out of place with her uh, bounciness and uh, bounced her right into second place, so to speak. Okay, with 1,923 votes goes to Nico Robin. All right, so Nico Robin, uh, 
Yeah, she got like about 13% of the total votes. Yeah, uh, I, I was really happy that she was in first place for as long as she was. Uh, maybe that she was going to come out on top. You know, that would have been a little bit of a surprise to me, given the given the other character we're talking about here. I mean, come on now. That other character, I think we all know who it is. It's not easy to compete with her, but Robin was doing a pretty good job there, so she's got some chops on her. You know, I, I don't know what it is about Robin. I think it's because whereas Nami just decided to just straight up, you know, wear the bikini all the time and show a lot of skin, uh, Robin, she always, she wears a lot of clothing, but she seems to always focus on the cleavage. She's queen of the cleavage. She's just like, no matter what I'm wearing, yeah, she'll wear, you know, things that'll cover up the majority of her body uh, for the most part. But then it's like, yeah, I gotta leave, I gotta leave the girls out to breathe, basically. So, um... Yeah, that's, that's the case with Robin, you know, I could go on and on about her, and I really want to, uh, but I'm just proud that she was, uh, first place for so long, and, uh, I really want to get to number one, because we all know, alright, okay, you guys ready? Are you guys ready? Nico Robin, you did great, but it's time to move on to number one in the best boobs in One Piece with two... 1,039 votes. Boa Hancock. I think this person says it best. Her boobs are just godly. Or in this case, Godly. Yeah. She's got, she's got large. Yeah. Um, what I love about Boa Hancock's boobs is they verge on the realm of sheer comedy. They're just comedy boobs. You know, like when we first saw her they're like, okay, they're pretty big. But then you get to Marine Ford, and it's like they have a mind of their own. There's a scene where she's staring down the Marines, and she does the knee, the, the, like she, you know, bends backwards, and it's all you see is just her boobs. And that's the joke. It's like talking breasts, you know. Um, we haven't really seen Hancock all that much since the time skip. You know, we've only seen her, like, in a brief cameo in Sabaundi, and that was it. Um... But yeah, um, I think uh, Hancock was a shoo-in to win this as soon as I started, which is why I was so surprised with Robin leading. Uh, but but eventually, after like the second or third day, Hancock overtook her, and uh, it was uh, not not a huge gap. There was only about a hundred votes difference between Hancock and uh, and Robin, so it was pretty close. Way more than Nami, because Nami had 1532. Nico Robin had 1923, and then Boa Hancock had 2039, so she cracked the 2000 spot, but Nami was like 400 votes behind even Robin, so it was a real head-and-head, boob-and-boob kind of race here for a while, so that was intense. Uh, but anyway, thanks you guys for voting. I had fun with this. I know you did too. Don't deny it. Um, the link to the Excel spreadsheet is below if you want to go and check out like the top 50 and everything like that. Um, you know, maybe next time I do a live stream, if somebody wants to ask, you know, how much this person got a particular vote, maybe I'll go and check out and tell you about it is. Uh, but, uh, like, most of them, as you could see, like, number one, 2,039, and then number, you know, 21 is, like, 100. So you can tell, like, the gap, it mostly, it was rather top-heavy. Do you know what I mean when I say top-heavy? Yeah, that's, that's what it was. Uh, but anyway, once again, thanks everybody for watching. Uh, I'll be doing some more polls in the future thanks to this new method I have with the Google Docs. It seemed to all work out very well. Uh, everything was smooth. There didn't really seem to be a lot of problems with this. Everything was organized in a nice, neat, you know, pie chart kind of way. So, uh, yeah, I can do some more polls in the future. Thanks for watching, everybody. Thanks for supporting me. Remember to like and subscribe. This will be Teching 101, signing out. Later, everybody.